Welcome to Classic Homesteading Practices. Today, we're going to be talking about cloning your plants so you can make more plants. So, it is pretty cool. Probably not as cool as it sounds, but being able to clone your plants or take clippings from your plants to make more plants is a humongous way to propagate and grow one's garden. Now, it's very simple to do. You just need to know where to look on your plant and how to clip the plant. Now, not all plants are able to be cloned. I'm going to be sharing a couple of them with you today just so you can get an understanding of how you can clone your plants or how you can prune your plants in order to get these clones. So the most obvious one is in the nightshade family. It is the humble tomato plant. (laughs) And it's a big one that a lot of people love, so that is the biggest reason why I wanted to talk about it. So whenever a tomato plant grows, it lets out what is called suckers. So as it grows up, you see your leaf shoots coming off and in between the main stem stalk of your tomato plant and these leaves, you have a node that comes out of the armpit of the plant where the leaf and the stalk connect. And that is your sucker. It is a new plant, basically, where fruit and a brand new tomato plant can grow from. Now, because this takes up a lot of the main tomato plant's energy, uh, you would want to go ahead and snap that off, or at least snap a couple of them off, so the main stalk can grow and make as much fruit or bigger fruit as possible if you have an indeterminate tomato plant. At least that is the way that I've been taught. But the cool thing is is that you don't just go ahead and throw those out. You can take those and put it in wet dirt or put it in a cup of water and let those root and make more tomato plants with this. This has been a way for me to either get a good healthy tomato plant and make many more and stick them in the garden or I have also taken these and made uh, plant sales with them. So if you ever found a tomato that you really like and you want to share with others, that's a really good way to be able to uh, clone a lot in a small amount of time. And mainly because they're already more of a mature plant than growing it from a seed. Again, you'll get more fruit faster. They'll grow faster. They already have a um, photosynthesis bushy leaf growth so they can grow a lot faster you're setting yourself up for a very easy propagation which is why cloning is so fantastic and this is also the same with peppers peppers are also part of the nightshade family they also have uh, a readily available amount of suckers that grow from the armpits of their leaf nodes and the main stem Again, I would probably, for both tomatoes and for peppers, wait until they're about four to six inches. I personally like them. The bigger, the better. But there is a point where they get too big, where they could potentially damage the plant. So, again, four to six inch range. And then go ahead and put them in water or put them in soil. I've had... uh, both just take it take the sucker make sure that there is uh, two inches of no leaves on the base of the sucker and i stuck it in the ground and they made a root system within a week and they grew insanely large it is fantastic Um, that's actually how i propagated my gold nugget tomatoes this year And the clone actually looks so much better than the main plant. But again, uh, doing this with peppers and tomatoes, it's very quick to shoot up. Again, they have the ability to be better than their mother plant. 
Again, you can propagate them much more quickly than starting from seed because they already have all of the all of the growth that a well a four to six week old plant has or sometimes even more mature plant has and all they need to do is just grow the root system and then they'll be able to grow taller make flowers get fruit and again it's just so much quicker i i the reason why i point this out so much is because of how quick it is so that is something i definitely say please try out with your tomatoes and your peppers along with sunflowers not a lot of people know this but especially in the larger variety of sunflowers they also have suckers in between that leaf and the main stem there is a node <laughs> in that armpit break off the suckers root them in the ground they'll do exactly the same thing they'll make another sunflower which will again will propagate more nodes more suckers and it is an endless cycle if you really want to get into it now suckers are not the only way that you can clone your plants for dragon fruit or cactuses if there are people who are into succulents there is pupping where the plant will make extra flowers um, or extra plants on its own that you are allowed to harvest off of it and either let them air dry or air grow for a little bit and then stick them in water or you go ahead and stick them in uh, water and then in soil Succulents are amazing. Cacti are amazing uh, for that reason because they, if they are given the environment to readily propagate, they will clone endlessly while they grow taller. It is insane how quickly they can pup or grow miniature versions of themselves. A really good example is uh, mother hen. And um, another one is dragon fruit because taking a, a mother hen or a cluster of eggs off of it, as people like to say, they look like tiny little flowers that are coming off of the main shoot or the main sides of the original mother plant. And what you do is you just take those little shoots and you break them apart and you let them air dry or air root which will look a little bit funny in the beginning but don't worry um, if they send out their air roots they'll look like little hairs coming off of the outside or in between every leafy petal succulent petal and that is just their way of gaining nutrients until they go into the ground. And that usually takes about a week or a week and a half before you want to put them in the soil. Again, look up more on succulents and their root propagation after depupping a mother plant. Just to make sure that you have more information than I'm giving you. This is very basic rudimentary stuff compared to what a succulent is going to need in order to be propagated properly. And then the other way, which you can do with cacti, uh, specifically in this case with dragon fruit, um, you can take off cuttings or cut certain parts of a cactus or a succulent that you can then put in the ground and water and it will grow roots kind of like a sucker but the biggest difference is is that these nodes are different than a sucker you can break it apart from where you see different sections of the plant growing and it will be a little bit obvious the dragon fruit itself creates little nodes or notches as it grows and 
they're pretty specifically seen in between the the growth cycle of a dragon fruit. It almost looks like the new section for some parts of it uh, have dried up and then have grown a new segment on that dried up part. Go ahead and snip that part off, cut the end, and stick the end in moist dirt and let it root. Now, what I've seen is people usually will stick it in the ground two inches deep and then water it and leave it be. And as soon as you get more growth, then you can start watering it once a week in well-draining moist soil. That is the biggest thing. Um, With cactuses versus dragon fruit, dragon fruit is a tropical cactus. It is very different from normal desert cacti, which again, make sure you look into this. I am just giving you information for cuttings, not for the actual true propagation and growth of all of these these different plants. But with a tropical cactus, it likes to retain moisture, but it doesn't like its roots to be extremely wet or waterlogged. So getting a good garden soil for it mixed with a cactus soil or putting perlite in there to make sure that it's well draining is very important for dragon fruit, especially when you're doing cuttings and you're repropagating it. And then the last way of cloning that I can personally think of, um, and it's an amazing way, is with vining plants. So watermelon, mainly pumpkins, cucumbers, and a couple of others, you will see something that is completely different than other plants. So your rambling pumpkin plant, we're going to use that as the example, has created two to five different vines. And as you've seen it grow, you will see the leaf nodes where there is fruit, and there will be these nodules on the underside of the vine. These little nubbies are going to be growing out of them. Those are the beginning of new roots. What you can do is let the root set in the ground and then cut, after it's been established in the ground, right behind it. What this will do to the plant will tell the plant that it has no longer... Uh, it no longer has access to the front of the plant and it will grow a new vine shoot from the node behind the one that you just cut. Now, because of this, two things are going to happen. One, your original pumpkin plant is now going to have a lot more energy to put a new vine out. And two, you've just gained a new pumpkin plant. And I highly suggest snipping off all of the fruit and letting the leaves grow the roots in for at least two weeks so it can well establish itself after it's just been snipped off the main plant. This is just giving it more energy, more time to recuperate. And now instead of having one pumpkin plant, you have two. And that new pumpkin plant will start making more fruit, more vines of it its own after it has been well established, and it will also have more roots in the little nodes wherever it has leaves and a fruit coming off of it. It is very easy to find these nodes because as soon as you flip over the plant, you can start seeing where these little tiny roots are coming out from. Fantastic way to grow a small pumpkin patch into an enormous one. It is how I have three pumpkin uh, plants right now. 
and the massive amount of pruning that I've been doing on them uh, has gone from three plants to five plants. I'm not going to be doing any more than that because it is setting so much fruit that it is scaring me. (laughs) And I personally believe that there is a limit that you should do for a pumpkin plant uh, before it takes over your entire garden. Now, there's also cloning when it comes to herbs. There's cloning when it comes to a lot of the nightshade family. Um, And again, like I said, watermelon and cucumbers do clones as well, and cuttings. The world is filled with options of how to make more plants. Um, You just need to figure out where it's at. I hope that this gave you enough knowledge to just get curious at least to find out if the plants that you are propagating can be cloned. If you want to clone them, you can do this with flowers too. There is just an endless option of cloning that you could do in your garden. And I really hope that you go and check it out so you can make clones for yours. I hope this has given you a little insight into propagation and cloning, and I hope it sets you up for your gardening endeavors in the future. Again, this is Classic Homesteading Practices. I hope you have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.